All right, guys, so now I want to talk to you about how to properly put two wires together. I know this is super basic, but I see people screw this up all the time. Um, simply just going to take two wires like these, and you're just going to want to put them together. Let's say there's a, a break in the line, or you see some, some fraying on the wire itself, and you just want to cut it off and put two new wires together. All right, so obviously you want to strip one end off and strip the other end off. I'm going to kind of show you guys how much I usually take off. All right, so let's say we have these two wires, freshly cut with a pair of snips. I'm going to take some wire strippers. I'm going to go about half an inch back. All right, take the other wire, go about half an inch back. A little bit more. All right, so now I'm just going to take them, spin them together like this, make it nice and tight. On the other way, you, this is also a good opportunity to use solder if you plan on doing that. Um, solder is obviously the best way to make the connection perfect. So you just want to take them and make an X in a way, not right in the middle, but just right kind of down by the center because you want to bring these two ends, you don't want them very loose apart that far. You want them tight together. So I'm, I'm just going to take this one, go about that far down, and then just start wrapping that around its base. Okay, so that's what one end should look like right there. Take this other end and do the same exact thing and I'm gonna wrap it towards the middle of the wire. And you get that perfect connection right there. This is when you would solder. So you could use your solder gun, you wanna go underneath the point of, of contact and then you wanna feed that solder in from the top. So that way it soaks it's getting heated up from the bottom and it's going to soak in from the top. You, only, you don't want to overcook the solder, otherwise it'll just drip right past it and go right back onto, the, onto your gun. But you just want to get just enough to start making a nice little bead all the way around it by heating it from the bottom and inserting it in from the top. All right. Then you can go ahead and use your electrical tape, wrap that around if you'd like, or if you have like a piece of uh, heat shrink, you can go ahead and move that over into its position, heat it up, and that connection is good. That's how I do my connections right there. All right, that looks pretty, pretty good. All right, so now I wanna introduce a new tool to you guys. Many of you maybe already have one, maybe you've seen one, but these work awesome. All right, it's this tool right here. Okay, so it's a, it is a wire stripper, but you can also use it for um, making a section of wire to contact on a wire that's already okay. So this first, lever right here actuates the stripper portion. Okay, so this strips the insulation off the wire. This back lever actuates like a hold. Okay, so now that's holding onto the wire. And then when you finish squeezing them together, it literally just pulls it apart. It's fantastic. All right, so what I use these for a lot is let's say, let's say this is a power wire, okay? And I wanna tap into this power and this is a ground or whatever. Let's say this is a power wire and I want to tap in right here because this is where my wire goes, down by the battery, whatever. And I just want to get into here, but I don't want to cut it and then make two ends and then put that end on there and then try to get it all back together. It just makes a big mess. This saves you time. I'm going to go ahead and grab this wire where I want it. I'm going to pull that section apart. Sorry, this is the wrong size. Pull that section off. And now I've made myself a place to add that wire. So I can put that wire right around here. Let's say I have a bare end like this. I can use that wire and put it right around it, just like that. Okay, now now I've jumped right into that wire. If you want, you can lay it back like this and then put some electrical tape from here and start working your way in. You can solder this as well. Soldering is obviously the best thing to do. But that's, this is an awesome tool. I, I, I'm gonna put a link in it down below. Um, they're great, great tools. You can also just use them just for regular stripping of wires. So I, like, here's the end of it right here. I can just strip it off and it's very easy. Okay, there's no force trying to wrap it around it or cut it off. It's awesome. It's an awesome, awesome tool. Okay, so those are some of the tricks that I have with wiring. Um, make them nice and clean. Be proud of your work. When it comes to Hooking stuff straight up to the battery, try to avoid that. Um, a lot of times people will use these feet 
and hook to the ground or hook to the power and then by the time you know it they got six of them on both sides of the, of the battery don't do that all right if at all possible if you have to go to the ground or you have to go to the power and you got two wires that need it or you notice that you're starting to build up this accumulation of these stacking them on top of each other just don't do that just run as many wires as you can i wouldn't go more than two wires into one and that makes it clean now it's just one lead instead of two and if it's a ground wire it doesn't have to go to the battery all right the ground wire can go anywhere on the frame as long as it's not painted or anything like that anywhere on the motor that uses the same kind of um, size bolt that you can just hook right into it anywhere can be used as a ground. You don't have to go to the battery. For power, I understand. You need a wiring diagram to figure out what wires are power, which ones are not. So battery is the easiest way. But remember that when you hook it up to the battery, that subject is on constantly. Okay? It's better to go to like a brake light or a running light. So when a key is on, now you have power only when the key is on. Does that make sense? If you just go straight to the battery, it's constantly feeding off battery power. Go to a running light or um, an, an ignition wire, something that gets power only when the key is on. That's my advice for getting power from wires, okay? So we made bullet connectors, we fixed connectors here. Um, that technique about twisting them, all the videos above. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, maybe some concerns, shoot me a comment below, man. Go to my YouTube channel, Instagram. I'm, put, I'm putting stuff up there all the time that may not make it to the website. Make sure you follow me there. There's a bunch of great information that I put out all the time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the conclusion. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Ride safe. Cody from Motorcycle MD. Later.